If you were around back in the days of the original Xbox, you may remember the DVD playback kit, a small $20 add-on to the original Xbox that somehow magically enabled you to watch DVDs on the console. Without one, it wouldn't let you watch DVDs and it would display an error message. Of course, many of us just used a modded Xbox anyway, which allowed for DVD playback with third-party software, and it was region-free of course. But let's go back to the DVD playback kit. Why was this even a thing? Was it just another revenue stream for Microsoft to make money on? And how does it even work? I mean, plugging in this dongle somehow miraculously unlocks DVD playback. On the surface, everything seems a little bit off, but it's something that we're finally going to get some answers to. In 1997, word had leaked that Sony's up-and-coming PlayStation 2 would not only be backward compatible with PlayStation 1, but it would also have a built-in DVD player. It was rumored that Ken Kataragi demanded the inclusion of DVD playback on the PlayStation 2 after becoming interested in the business model of the ill-fated Nuon DVD player. His plan was simple. Rather than put a game system inside a DVD player, put the player inside the system. And it worked. In 2001, with the launch of the original Xbox, many households already had DVD players, but Microsoft could ill afford to leave the feature out. They wanted to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sony and even one-up them where they could. They did so with the built-in hard drive, Dolby Surround 5.1 support, and built-in Ethernet. But they did not want to skim out on features, even though the original Xbox retailed at $299, the same exact price as the PlayStation 2. At launch, the original Xbox did not play DVDs out of the box. Rather, Microsoft made you buy the Xbox DVD playback kit, a $20 add-on that had a dongle and a remote control. It seemed like a way to fleece customers out of more money, but in reality, this was not actually the case. When the original Xbox launched, Dolby Laboratories announced that the Xbox video game system from Microsoft would feature the new Dolby Interactive Content Encoder, a breakthrough technology that dynamically encodes multi-channel audio into Dolby Digital 5.1. Now, when it comes to the world of DVD playback, things aren't always so cut and dry. Microsoft indeed had Dolby Digital 5.1 baked into the Xbox's motherboard, but they had to come up with a specific way in order to allow DVD playback to run on the original Xbox. If we take a closer look at the DVD dongle, inscribed are the words made under license by Dolby Laboratories. But why would this wording be on the dongle device when the Xbox hardware supports Dolby 5.1? It's true that the Xbox audio hardware has 5.1 encoding, but it also comes at a hidden cost. Microsoft would be required to pay Dolby for a license for 5.1 encoded DVD movie audio playback, which would have been very expensive to license every single Xbox that was manufactured. It would have also increased the launch price and Microsoft wanted to stay neck and neck with Sony. So in order to get around paying this licensing costs, Microsoft simply shifted the ability to play DVDs and the Dolby license onto the dongle. Microsoft manufactured far less DVD playback kits so they could better control the cost of a license to Dolby. As a customer, if you wanted to play DVDs on your Xbox, you would effectively be paying for a license to do so. And this was Microsoft's way around the expensive licensing issue. But of course, there is always more to the story. Okay, so we get it. Microsoft had pushed the licensing cost from the original Xbox hardware itself onto an external DVD playback device that cost $20 that you may or may not purchase. And a lot of people didn't. I ended up picking one up back in the day, which is the same one that you see here. But a lot of people didn't buy one because they didn't really care about playing DVDs. And that was the point. Microsoft did not want to spend the money on licensing every single Xbox out there. And that would have in turn increased the cost of the system. Okay, so we've figured out why Microsoft did not allow for the playback of DVDs out of the box and required a dongle to do so. But the next question becomes, how does the Xbox play DVDs in the first place? Well, let's consider a few scenarios. The first one is, let's assume that the DVD player software is just an XBE or Xbox executable and it's stored somewhere on the Xbox's hard disk. If we take a look at the dashboard files, there is one file called dvd.xip. 
The thinking here might be that this file is encrypted and that the dongle contains some type of key that enables it, but we can quickly rule this out as this file only contains asset data for the DVD player itself. There is actually no DVD player in this code. It's easy to verify as well since if you have a custom dashboard like Evolution X, with the DVD player dongle it will still let you play DVDs. Therefore, the player must live somewhere else. The second guess might be that the DVD player lives in the Xbox's BIOS or kernel. This is in line with ruling out the first scenario but the DVD player software is not actually on the Xbox's BIOS either. In fact, the DVD player software itself is installed onto the dongle that you connect to the Xbox. If we open up the dongle, there is a TSOP chip that's been installed. What's actually happening here is that the dongle contains a standard Xbox executable that lives on the ROM, which contains the DVD player application itself. But note, this file is not standalone. It interfaces with the DVD.XIP dashboard file from previously, and with both the executable and the XIP, both these two things allow for the DVD player to run. But hold on a second, how does a DVD dongle device have the ability to launch an XBE? According to the official Xbox XDK documentation on a development kit, there is a media flag that is set for every XBE. This media flag determines where this XBE is allowed to run from. According to the official XDK documentation, that even backs up the claim that only DVDs, CDs and the Xbox's hard disk can boot into XBEs. So how can we launch an XBE from a dongle? Well, there is a hidden hex value 100, which allows for the media type of dongle. Therefore, with a properly signed XBE and the media type of the dongle set to hexadecimal 100, it allows the device to run its XBE, which contains the DVD player. Pretty clever stuff. Now, of course, history will tell us that the Xbox was cracked almost immediately after launch, and many homebrew and modded players quickly started to appear, rendering the official DVD player by Microsoft obsolete. The first known product was DVD X by Team Executor, which essentially just took the DVD player software and made it a standalone application that could run on any modded system, region free, of course. And then later on came Xbox Media Player, which in turn became Xbox Media Center or XBMC, which could not only play DVDs, it also took advantage of the DVD playback remote control and played many different formats and could stream media over the network. Because the DVD dongle plugs into the controller port, which is essentially a USB port, it means by connecting it up to a PC via a USB adapter, you can simply dump the contents of the dongle, and it will confirm that Microsoft just dumped the player code onto the dongle and charged a fee for the privilege, in order to get around the licensing costs. Like most things on the original Xbox, the DVD playback kit was an interesting experiment that saved Microsoft money but it was ultimately a feature that was not very popular. Most people who used their Xbox for media had a modded system running XBMC, and in the end, Microsoft did not continue with this approach and just included a DVD player with 5.1 encoding on the Xbox 360. The dongle, remote control, and embedding a hidden XBE inside the dongle seemed like more trouble than what it was worth, and it was an interesting take on trying to cut costs and stay in direct competition with Sony. Now, the DVD playback kit was not the last time Microsoft have struggled with the concept of DVD and video. On the Xbox 360, they also released the HD DVD add-on as an extra after the fact to keep the costs down on the base system as well. And as it turns out, that particular add-on was also a catastrophic failure. Obviously, the format was completely obliterated by Sony and Blu-ray, but in the end, no one really bought that HD DVD add-on anyway. It's really more of a collector's item these days where people just kind of buy it and keep it on their shelves, but no one really does anything with it, and no one really did back then either. And when the Xbox One was released, we've finally got a all-in-one entertainment center that allows you to watch DVDs, stream video, play Blu-rays, watch television, record television. Watch TV. It's TV. TV and TV remote. TV experience. TV. 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 Sports TV. 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 Anybody? But in the end, people just wanted to play games. They didn't really care about all the extras. And in the end, that kind of hurt Microsoft and the Xbox One. And they really got off to a 
bad start with the Xbox One. But I've always felt this topic of DVD and media has been an interesting and fascinating topic. And it's very interesting to see the ways that Microsoft have handled these ideas over the years with the different generations of home console. Well guys, I'm going to leave it here for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, you know what to do. Leave me a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.